Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da Habita fillah A question was asked Assalamu alaikum Ustad I love your work and you for the sake of Allah and would like to hear your advice As of lately I find myself in a state of great mental stress It is though I'm in a mental dark hole I'm trying to be more pious but I've been afflicted by some evil thoughts I started to question the nature of these thoughts, which only led to more related and unrelated questions that I know I will not find the answer for. I obsessively and unwantedly have these evil thoughts and questions. I feel mentally, I feel mental stress or unrest, almost as though I'm not satisfied with Allah's decree, but I do not want to feel this way. I feel as though I'm not satisfied with life and my purpose in it. I pray to get better but it's been approximately three months and no chance. I wish you can help by the will of Allah. I don't know if I can help, but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you ease and success in overcoming these uh, feelings of mental distress. And we talked about this prior uh, in some other sittings with other uh, questions when it comes to uh, determining whether something is mental illness and so forth and that those things need to be uh, handed over if you will to professionals to people who deal with those issues of mental uh, if someone has dementia or someone has some sort of mental illness or depression and things like this that a lot of times it isn't simply just that a person needs a Sharia ruling or verdict instead they have to deal with them through the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this may come through uh, those people who are knowledgeable in those affairs. So that's one thing that we have to be aware of with regards to uh, mental disorders and mental distress. Uh, what I can advise is that in general do ruqya, you know, do uh, seek cure for these illnesses through the shara and that could either be by going to someone who is uh you know knowledgeable in those affairs or uh doing ruqya uh yourself and uh trying to cure yourself in with the sharia based means the second thing that i can advise is that in general dealing with it by reading quran Increasing the Quran in your life and reading it, un trying to understand it, contemplating, reflecting upon it, and reminding yourself of the purpose of life. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنِّ وَالْأَنْتِلِ الْعَبُدُونَ I have not created mankind in the jinn uh, except for the purpose of worshipping me. So letting us know that you have a divine purpose. So never should the believer be without purpose. Although we're humans, we're frail. We get alone, we get lonely, we get times when we're by ourselves and we need more than that reminder sometimes. Sometimes you, you, you just need something you need to do. So as I've advised people prior to this, is find some activities that you enjoy doing. If it's knitting, if it's boxing on your bag, if it's weightlifting at home, if it is jogging, if it is, you know, because I find that physical, having a physical outlet is very, very important. Uh, skipping rope, whatever, whatever it is that you might find some enjoyment, that's very important because the physical and the mental and the spiritual, you know, we're one, we're one being. And so, and as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, which is uh, very good for us to reflect on, he said, "Inna fi jizad mudghatin ida salaha salaha jizad kullu wa ida fasad fasad jizad kullu ala wa hiya qalb." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam said that verily in the body is a morsel of flesh, and that if it is uh, healthy, then the whole body is healthy. If it is sick, then the whole body is sick. Verily, it's the heart, and. Here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from what we know and from the explanations of Ahl al-Ilm, is that he's talking about uh, the, phys uh, the spiritual sickness. And so if we are spiritually sick, and you will feel this, you know, when you, you think about the times when you're low in Iman, 
you, you find depression. You find, you know, when you're inclined towards sin or you're just easily falling into sin, you don't feel good. You really don't feel good. If you feel good, then you're really in a state of danger. But generally, the Muslim is going to feel some sorrow. So making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Tubu uh, wallahi ayyul mu'minun la'allukum. Tubu wallahi jami'an ayyul mu'minun la'allukum tuflihun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, make tawbah, make repentance, all of you uh, believers, ayyul mu'minun la'allukum tuflihun, in order that you will have success. So you can find that success, of course, in the hereafter. But you'll find it in this life because when you think about it, when you're in high Iman, think about the times when you've had a strong state of Iman, how you're able to, you know, generally accompanying that is a positive attitude. You're able to deal with whatever. Oh, something happened. You, you can deal with that. You, you, you feel positive. You feel like doing something. You're motivated. All of those are good, positive. That's positive energy and positive feelings. And that's positive spirituality. And that is coming close. Those are things and means in which to bring you, uh, you know, because you feel a stronger relationship with Eliza with Joe. And because of that, you feel better. You feel better all around. So you can see that relationship. In the fijiz and mudra. You know, verily in the, the body, there's a morsel of flesh, you know. And if it is healthy, then the whole body is healthy. So one goal for you and myself and all of us is to really work on that heart. That's why working on the heart and trying to clean it up and trying to remove the sinful practices and remove those things which make you depressed. Because really sin, it causes you depression. And as Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah he mentioned uh, he mentioned about ma'asi. He mentioned about sin. He said ma'asi al ma'asi barid al kufr. He said that sinfulness, you know, it's a means to disbelief, because the person who commits sins, they're not a disbeliever. This is the difference between ahl sunnah wa ahl bid'ah from the takfiriyin and, and and the khawarij. But ahl sunnah says no, you know, you're still a believer. You're just a believer with weaker iman, you know, as long, from doing sins. They affect you. They make you, they, they, it's a cycle. It makes you go down in your iman and in other ways. But those extremists, their belief is that the, uh, uh, when you have those sins, you've, you've, you're a disbeliever. Okay, so you're drinking wine, you're a disbeliever. You committed zina, you're a disbeliever. So they, uh, you know, have either you're a full believer or you are a disbeliever. That's it. You know, it's a, it's a very black and white for them. But Ahl Sunnah has a different belief according to the book in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Sabil al-Mu'mineen, which is the Sabil al salaf al So getting back to your issue in general, working on your heart is very important. And those are all the, the pieces of advice that I can offer. And again, I'm not uh, a professional in those uh in that field and i have worked i do have some limited experience uh many many years ago i was a social worker and i worked in that kind of environment uh, in the mental health environment and saw and learned some things but again i'm not a professional so if you need to go beyond that uh you know once you've tried your utmost with a sincere intention to be positive in your life you've made uh, you know, you've tr you're making toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're putting in positive energy or positive mental thoughts in your in your head and you are filling it up with the book of Allah and the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and reading those those positive, uh, you know, reading those hadith that are going to increase your iman and reading those ayat, uh, you, know, uh, you know, that increase your iman and the glad tidings of the mu'mineen and putting yourself in righteous, uh, with righteous companions, and also having positive uh, habits, positive habits. You know, mix it up a little bit. Me, I love, I like to read books. Sometimes I'll just pick up a book just to read. You know, it could be for Iman, or it could be for research, it could be for teaching, you know, whatever, or it could be for revision. There's different reasons, okay, uh, when it comes to religious books. But I might read other books for other reasons. And... 
it's important to have some habits. I also like to do physical. If I was back in America, I would have me a nice mountain bike. I will get me a nice mountain bike when I go back. A nice one, and I'll be in, on, the, on the mountains because that's what I like to do. That's a getaway from me. That's a way that I see a Los Panatas creation, and I can reflect. I love it. I also hike. I love, I don't care if it's snow or rain, I'll go out in those mountains if I can. Um, you know, you need those outlets, those positive outlets. If you like to wrestle, start wrestling. If you like to get on the bag, I like to get on the bag too. I like to lift weights. I like to, do, you know, you need those physical, uh, you know, for me, I need that. That's a part of who I am. So I need the physical, I need the mental, and I need the spiritual. And, you know, we and then we go forward from there. And so we ask of all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless, bless us all with a class with a bat and make all of our affairs easy and make us all champions over uh, depression and over uh, stress and things that uh, take us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hurt our hearts and cause us to do sin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.